Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be covering the ABH Primrose palette. So if you want to see my thoughts on this, my swatches, an eye look, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I'm really excited for today's video because it's been a long time since ABH has launched a palette kind of in this style. For the last, I wanna say, year and a half around that time frame, the only palettes that they've been launching have been the Square Big Norvina palette, which I really, really like, but I feel like they're going back to their OG roots here with this palette, of course, with some slight upgrades and changes. Well, hopefully they're upgrades. <laughs> so right now, this palette is only available on the ABH website. I do not have any dates as to when this will be coming to other retailers. So once you find out, please let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you have my notification bell on because I will let you guys know in my community tab when this palette reaches other retailers. It is $55 on the ABH website right now and they do acknowledge that this is part of their holiday collection. This palette is supposed to be an all-in-one palette for instant on-the-go to ultra glam looks. So they're playing on that marketing of this is a daytime palette, but it can transition to evening palettes. So here's the box that it comes in. And if you do need to take a closer look at the ingredients or the back of the palette, feel free to pause right here. The outer packaging itself of the actual palette is really nice, very sturdy, kind of a traditional style palette, you know, nothing crazy. It's no longer fuzzy like the previous ABH palettes. This is gonna be much easier to clean if you get prints on it. And I don't know, if you look at my soft glam right here, it's all dirty, you're not gonna get that on there. And on the back here, it says that the palette is made in the USA. It has a 12 month shelf life and they describe it as a palette for face and eyes. So it says there's a mixture of eyeshadows, pressed pigments for face and body, and blushes. Before I take a deeper dive into that, let's take a look at the actual sizing of this compared to the traditional sizing of ABH palettes up to this point. So you can see that the ABH Soft Glam palette, in the older packaging, it's about the same. Eh, soft glam is maybe the tiniest bit fat, but you can see that the palette is longer and whoops, and it's a little bit shorter as well. So I don't know, I feel like this feels a little bit more sleek, but just because I've collected so many of the ABH palettes in the past, I was kind of hoping it would be the same size as this, but really not that big of a deal. I think it's fine. It's a nice long palette. <laughs> okay, so we open it up here. It does have a magnetic closure. You have a nice long mirror. The actual palette itself is not gonna stand up on its own, but not that big of a deal. It does go completely flat. And then you are going to reveal the 12 shades here. So you'll see we have about 10 kind of normal eyeshadow sizes and then two what are explained to be blushes on the box here. However, they do say on the website that you can definitely use all of these shades for contouring and blushing and highlighting the face as well. If you actually go to their website and go under how to apply, there's a section that's called pro tips. And for example, they recommend, and I mean, I don't know if I'd actually do this, but you can use Primrose, Mango, Rouge, Deep Berry, and Claret, all as blushes as well. So they do give other suggestions on ways that you can get a lot of use out of these palettes. So we'll test that today just for fun. And then you'll see what's different compared to all of their older palettes is there are two blushes that were included in this palette right here. Now something to note, a large number of these shades are deemed not eye safe or as pressed pigments. If you're not new to this, a lot of times, based on the US regulations, there's a lot of formulas that aren't approved as eye safe, and I'm not telling you to use them, but I think you'll be okay. I've personally not noticed any issues with that, uh, but let's see, Claret, Deep Berry, Grapefruit Honey, Mango Peony, Primrose, Sparkling Amber, and Rouge are not intended for use around the immediate eye area. So like all of this palette is like not recommended for use around the eyes. So it's a pressed pigment palette, okay? It's not technically an eyeshadow palette. So yeah, in case you needed to know that and that's a turn off to you, there you go. 
very few shadows in here are actually deemed ice safe. It looks like just rose water, which is a gorgeous color by the way, rose water, fire opal, this one, and saddle are the only technically ice safe. Very, very interesting. Is that the case with the older ones? I mean, soft glam, for example, is an ice shadow palette, so there shouldn't be any press pigments. Anyways, just something to note. Without further ado, let's come in for some swatches. I'm gonna do live swatches. Let me know if you guys prefer this over just the overlay swatches that I used to do, but I feel like it's a good way for you to see the colors and me to experience the swatching with you guys. Before we dive into swatching, take a close look at the palette here. I'm going to include these two blushes in the count for matte shades. So there are seven true mattes in this palette. There's one matte right here, which is going to be primrose, which has shimmers in there. You can see that. And then there's going to be four shimmer or metallic shades. So let's get to swatching. This is my Apple Watch indentation, by the way. <laughs> so we have rose water, which is a metallic bright opal with multi-dimensional reflex, honey which is a matte sandy beige, sparkling amber which is a metallic rose gold with multi-dimensional reflex and I can tell you from these first three swatches quite powdery nothing too crazy but very kind of in line with the ABH formula. Primrose is a matte dusty rose with multi-dimensional reflex Mango is a matte coral peach. Peony is a sparkling petal pink with gold reflex. Rouge is a matte rose beige brown. Fire opal is a metallic bright copper with opal reflex, very, very pigmented. Deep berry is a matte deep berry. Clarae is a matte rich plum that swatched beautifully. Grapefruit is a matte pink coral. This is one of the blushes. And then here's the last blush, which is saddle, and that's a matte terracotta. So here's swatches. I didn't dig too heavily in the pan. They are quite pigmented. I'm very happy with how this palette swatched. Uh, the shadows themselves do feel to be quite in line with the previous ABH formula that you tend to find in these palettes in that they are a little bit more powdery, which is fine because the shadows are super pigmented and they blend really easily and the metallics look really beautiful. So I can't wait to apply this on my eyelid just to compare them to the formulas last year that they had out to see if they're in line with those. and to see how they apply. All right, so let's get to application. I do want to try Saddle. It looks like it'd be very, very warm, but I want to try it as a bronzer. So I'm going to use a brush that doesn't have too much density to it to see if we can work it out as a bronzer. I don't know, let's try it. This is an Isam V49. So I'm going to go very light because this looks very, very pigmented. So I'm almost going to place it as if it were a cream product because there's lots of pigment that picked up, literally loose particles. So we're pressing it in and now let's blend it. But that color is very, very pigmented. I feel like it's gonna make a great transition shade in this palette. And the color is blending out pretty nicely. You'll see where I first placed it down. It's having a little bit more trouble blending out on the face, but honestly, I'm happy with how this worked out as a bronzer. It did the job. I think I'd bring my other bronzers with me or use a real bronzer before I'd reach for this, but let's say I didn't have a bronzer with me. This certainly gets the job done. So it's not a bad bronzer, not the best. My biggest piece of advice, what you saw right there, is to really only apply as little of this as you can as a bronzer because it's way too orange. <laughs> Otherwise, way too pigmented and orange, but if you can get very little of it on your brush, it's gonna blend out and work just fine to warm the face. It's not gonna shade the face, but it will warm the face. We are gonna use Grapefruit next as the blush. Now remember, Grapefruit is a matte pink coral. It looks beautiful. I'm gonna use my Blinged Brush F14. These are very pigmented, you guys, let's see. I mean, this particular shade is quite light, so I don't need to go as light as I did with Saddle here, 
but it's still, you know, if you're very fair, use a light hand with this. But this is blending out just fine as a blush. Is it a blush formula that I'm dying for? No, but it's working like a pretty traditional, decent blush formula, and I'm happy with this. So awesome. So you can definitely pull these two colors as face colors. They work just fine. You can, of course, also use them on the eyes. There's a few recommendations that we can use for highlights, which will be rose water, sparkling amber, peony, and fire opal. Some of the shades you'll see are much darker than others, so that's really great because it's going to work for a variety of skin tones as far as finding a highlighter. I mean, I wouldn't say any of these are ideal highlights for me, but rose water is going to be the closest, so I'm going to use a Kaleidos H1. And this is one of their metallic formulas, so it'll be interesting to see how it applies as a highlight because that looks like a lot. Yeah. I mean, as I suspected, I would not use this as a highlight if I were you on your cheek, unless you had to, because it is a little bit chunky looking. It's definitely like a metallic eyeshadow. It doesn't apply or look smooth on the skin. It does give a sheen, but this is like a pretty strong pink highlight, and it doesn't look as smooth on the skin, so I don't really recommend using any of these shades as highlights on the face. They suggested it. And sometimes you're in a situation where you have to, so it works. All right, we're gonna move on to the eyes. I'm actually gonna do this eye first to get my thoughts collected, and then we'll meet back for this eye. I mean, I'm into this palette. You guys know this color story I was all over. So, and by the way, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, but I do want you to know, while sure these colors have been done before, I will admit this palette opening it up, so beautiful, more beautiful than what you see online. So yeah, just so you know. Comparing it to the photos online and seeing it in person, much prettier, pretty dimension and sparkles from those metallic shades. The purpley tones have got me, so. Anyways, let's do this look, which I really, really like, and it's right up my alley, and I've definitely done looks like this before, and I'm happy about it again. I'm gonna use a Kaleidos Crease Brush, and we're taking some of Mango as our transition color. I love this shade, and they suggested you can also use this as a blush, and I think that this color would make gorgeous blush, but it's just going to be our transition for today. It's not overly pigmented, and this is one of the shades that aren't overly powdery as well. Not that any of these shades are overly powdery, but this is the least powdery matte shade in this palette. I'm not getting any kick up, and you can see it's not too pigmented, but it is the perfect, perfect transition color. We are going to go right into it. I'm using a refer 14, and we are going into Primrose, aka my favorite shade in the palette. I love this shade. It is so beautiful. So you can see we're doing a halo eye. So I'm putting the color on the inner and outer corner of the eye and the actual texture of the shadow itself while uh, there is a little bit of kick up it's not super powdery either and there are glitters in the pan however on the eyelid you can see it's mostly just a matte shade it just has those sparkles in there really just to look pretty in the palette itself sometimes shadows like these can be difficult to blend and maybe they stick in certain places maybe they just don't apply as well on the eyelid I have to say the quality of this seems really good it's blending really really nice. It's even on the eyelid. I am a fan of this. I think it's a really beautiful shade and it's like right up my alley. I love these kind of shades. I will blend out the edges momentarily, but let's start working on building up depth first. We're going into Deep Berry right here, which is the deepest shade in the palette. It swatched really smooth and really pigmented and it applied really nice, but I will say it wasn't as deep as I was anticipating it to be. I did have to keep building it up. Not saying it's not pigmented. You can see it's pigmented, but when I swatched it, I thought it was really dark on the the eye and I am going more sparingly of course but for some reason I thought it was closer to black but anyways it's doing just fine adding the depth again really smooth very easy to blend even coverage on the eyelid nothing bad to say about it taking my original crease brush let's work on these edges we are going to go into peony next this is I mean it's a metallic but it's less foiled than the other three shades this one is the closest to a shimmer that you will find in this palette the rest are more foiled and this has a slight golden shift to it really pretty in the center of the eyelid I really wanted to bring in the golden tones from this shade 
So we're going to put a little bit of the gold on the eyelid. I'm taking Sparkling Amber. I know my nails are atrocious. When are they not? But on my finger. And I'm just applying this right to the base of the center of my lash line. And so when my eyes are open, that brings out the gold tones. And then when my eyes are closed, you can see it fade up into the pink with the golden shift. So we're bringing out the gold right on the center of the lid right here. And then I am going to really quickly just re- define these inner and outer corners here to keep it looking smoky. Next up, we're taking some of rose water. Going to use rose water as the inner corner color and the highlight underneath my brow bone. You can see really concentrated. It's very, very pink. That's also what is the highlight on my face. And you could also use this in the center of the lid to really make the eye pop, but I went, opted for the gold to bring out the golden shift in Peony. Sonia G Soft Definer, and then we're going into this shade right here. This shade is so pigmented. Minted. It's a little bit more of the powdery shades in this palette, not too bad, but you can see it gives so much pigment. I'm really impressed with this shade. I think it looks really beautiful and it has a little bit more warmth to it compared to the other purples on the eyes. So we're just bringing in the warmth along the bottom lash line, just like that. I'm gonna use the same brush and we're gonna go into Deep Berry. And then I'm going to get this deep shade pretty close to the lash line along the whole lower lash line. I wanna make sure that first shade peeks through and then we want the depth to kind of smoke out. So you want the depth as close to the lash line as possible. Beautiful. So I thought that this was pretty, but I wanted to bring down some of the glow. So I'm going to take a pencil brush. I'm going to use Sparkling Amber. And this, I'm going to focus it not all the way into the inner corner, but it's focusing more so into the center of the lower lash line and kind of bringing it in a little bit, but stopping at the inner corner. You can see that this shade's a little bit more foiled. My suggestion, if you're going to use this palette especially if you're playing with the shimmers or you are heavy-handed definitely do your face makeup after or use some form of protection just to keep your eye makeup safe I tend to have a very light hand so it's not as important for me to do that but do keep that in mind because this palette is a little bit messy the messiness makes it easy to use though but just be aware be careful on that front but I'm gonna put on liner lashes and lips and I will be back to give you my final thoughts on this. Ladies and gents, here is the final look. I went with some Huda half lashes and I overlined like crazy. I don't, it was uh, the Fenty Uncuffed Liquid Lip. And since it's a liquid lip, I thought we'll just leave it. But anyways, final thoughts on this palette. I really, really enjoyed this. I think the quality on this is really great. There's something about it that seems like a little bit different than the original, like for example, Soft Glam, that whole family. But it's, it's on par. It's really, really nice. Like I said, just a little bit messy, but all ABH palettes are. And overall, in terms of quality, I definitely recommend it. I definitely think there are some cons that might be there for you. Like number one, 90% of this palette is not technically eye safe. And lastly, sure, this color story isn't the most unique. However, in terms of quality, I really like it. So if this looks like a color story that you'd be into, I think this one is really nice. And I think ABH came out with a good one. Love the color story here. It's quite wearable. If you were curious as to how she looks next to, I would say probably the... Norvina palette is the closest. Here's how they would look. So I would say, you know what? Honestly, if you have the Norvina palette, you probably don't need the Primrose palette. But those two, in my opinion, are the most comparable within the line. And honestly, your Norvina might be old. This is an older palette, so that's up to you to decide. I played in more of the purpley mauve tones today, but you can get really warm looks right here. Stuff that's a little bit more neutral and golden. I think this is a great wearable palette, and I really do see how it can be transitioned from daytime to nighttime. I really like this palette personally. I'm happy that I picked it up and it might not scream the most unique palette in the world, but I think it was a really great release from ABH. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.